हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन सो आई एम स्टार्टिंग न्यू सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन द किडनी पैथोलॉजी स्टार्टिंग विद द इंट्रोडक्शन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द एनाटॉमी ऑफ किडनी सो यू ऑलरेडी नो दैट किडनी हैज एन आउटर रीनल कॉटेक्स एंड इनर पार्ट नोन एज रीनल मेडुला द कॉटेक्स हैज गॉट द पार्ट ऑफ नेफ्रॉन दैट इज द ग्लोमेरुलस एंड द proximal and distal tubules while in the medulla especially in the renal pyramids there are the loop of henle and the collecting ducts so all the collecting ducts they converge to a point of uh, renal papilla this papilla opens into the minor calyx the minor calyx opens into the major calyx uh, the major calyx will continue into the pelvis which will further continue to the ureter uh, this is the pelvic ureteral ureteric junction and uh, the kidney is supplied by the renal artery and its branches so the renal artery will enter the kidney it will divide into its uh, segmental branches then interlobar artery arcuate artery interlobular artery and then the uh, the afferent arteriole it will uh, enter the glomerulus and form the capillary network then the capillary network will leave the glomerulus in the form of efferent arteriole it will also form the uh, capillary plexus around the tubules the kidney is uh, drained by the renal vein and at the hilum this is the hilum at the hilum the vein artery and pelvis they are present anterior to posterior so we remember by vap vein artery pelvis they are present anteriorly to <coughs> posteriorly next the function of uh, kidney as you already know its main function is ex excretion of the waste products of metabolism mainly the nitrogenous waste and it will reg also regulate the acid base balance of the body basically the concentration of the water and the various ions and calcium phosphorus etc it is all regulated by the kidney then it also serves endocrine function because it synthesizes erythropoietin which is important for the erythropoiesis so that's why in a patient of chronic kidney disease the anemia is very common then <clears throat> secondly it synthesizes the renin which will help in the regulation of the blood pressure of the body vitamin d is synthesized in its final step in the kidney and then vitamin d has got its role in the calcium homeostasis so in the absorption of calcium and in the uh, health of the bone then uh, clinical significance uh, then why we need to study the renal pathology it is because the diseases uh, various diseases can affect the kidney and the diseases can affect the different parts of the kidney that is glomeruli and tubules interstitium and blood vessels and they have got a little bit different morphology and uh, these diseases they can uh, clinically manifest as acute kidney injury then chronic kidney disease acute kidney injury was previously known as acute renal failure and chronic kidney disease was previously known as crf chronic renal failure and this chronic renal failure ultimately ends in the <coughs> end stage renal disease so that is why we need to understand the different pathologies which are affecting the kidney and there are certain clinical syndromes and clinical terms that we should know before we Uh, study the different uh, diseases of kidney so the first term is azotemia so azotemia and azotemia there is a biochemical disturbance uh, that there is increased blood urea nitrogen and creatinine because there is decreased glomerular filtration rate now gfr is an important function to assess the uh, important test to assess the kidney function and when the gfr is decreased there will be increase in the uh, blood urea nitrogen and the serum creatinine it can have uh, various causes in different acute and chronic kidney diseases azotemia can be seen and the causes uh, are mostly renal but sometimes extra renal causes can be seen uh, so the pre renal causes of azotemia can be when there is decreased perfusion of kidneys like in case of uh, decreased blood pressure or if there is excessive uh, blood loss from the body or fluid loss from the body then in that case uh, like in case of shock when the uh, effective volume of the body is decreased then in that case the when the intravascular volume is decreased the azotemia will take place because decreased blood supply to the kidney and the post renal causes may be 
when there is uh, obstruction to the flow of urine so in that case post renal azotemia will be seen and if that uh, obstruction is relieved then it will, it will also correct the azotemia so you need to know this term azotemia sometimes it, it is asked in viva also this next term is uremia so uremia is azotemia plus the clinical signs and symptoms which are associated with this increased burn creatinine so uh, uremia plus uh, azotemia plus clinical signs and symptoms is uremia this is again asked in viva and when there is uremia it signifies signifies that there is failure of the renal excretory system and the, at that there are metabolic alterations in the body so <clears throat> and sometimes secondarily there is involvement of uh, gastrointestinal system so there can be uh, gastroenteritis nerves can be involved resulting in peripheral neuropathy and even sometimes heart is involved and there can be pericarditis so that is called uremic pericarditis so uremia can result in uh, it can affect the kidney as well as the systemic organs next is very important nephritic and nephrotic syndrome this we will study in detail in the uh, coming lectures and uh, nephritic syndrome it is again a clinical syndrome and it is seen in uh, number of glomerular diseases now glomerular diseases we will discuss in detail later it can be caused by primary diseases of the glomeruli and sometimes systemic diseases like diabetes hypertension or amyloidosis they can also cause the glomerular diseases where it can manifest as nephritic syndrome and uh, <clears throat> the inflammatory glomerular diseases they uh, manifest as the nephritic syndrome in which there is hematuria then protein urea and hypertension an example of a nephritic syndrome uh, causing disease is post streptococcal glomerular nephritis and another example is rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis in which there is acute nephritis <clears throat> along with rapid decline in gfr so gfr will de de uh, decrease rapidly within days uh, the second syndrome is nephrotic syndrome again it is because of glomerular diseases and in this there is defective filtration because of which there is heavy proteinuria so the this range this you have to remember more than 3.5 grams per day and uh, this is no, known as nephrotic range proteinuria if proteinuria is less than this range we call it subnephrotic range proteinuria when there is uh, excretion of in, uh, proteins in the urine then there is decreased albumin in the blood resulting in hypoalbuminemia and again this will be associated with severe edema because the protein loss is occurring from the blood so there will be uh, edema and along with that there is hyperlipidemia and lipiduria so these are the components of nephrotic syndrome and very commonly these are asked in the viva and we'll take it in detail in the coming lectures now next uh, syndrome is acute kidney injury previously so it was called acute renal failure and in aki there is rapid decline in the glomerular filtration rate and uh, acid base imbalance now chronic kidney disease is presence of decreased GF gfr which is <clears throat> persistently or continuously less than 60 ml per minute per 1.73 m square which is the surface area of the human body for at least 3 months so this criteria you have to remember <clears throat> and it can be due to any cause affecting the kidney or there is persistent albumin urea so that amounts to chronic renal failure or chronic kidney disease uh, normal gfr again you should remember the range it is 90 to 120 ml per minute and in case the gfr falls below 15 then it signifies signifies kidney failure now next is asymptomatic hematuria or proteinuria which, which can be seen in mild glomerular injury so glomerular injury can be uh, most commonly is immune mediated then uh, end stage renal disease in this uh, the gfr is uh, less than 5% of the normal and esrd generally progresses from the chronic kidney disease <clears throat> and it is the last stage of uremia then the these were about the glomerular diseases and the tubular defects they commonly manifest as polyuria which is increased urine output 
generally more than 2 liters per day then nocturia which is increased urination in the night time and the acid acid base imbalances uh, next is uh, renal stones in which uh, the clinical manifestation is the renal colic which is very characteristic and very severe along with hematuria that is uh, rbc is coming in the urine so again we will take it in detail later uh, so glomerular diseases it is due to the injury to the glomerulus and the causes can be either primary or secondary so primary causes the important ones are post infectious glomerulonephritis then rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis then minimal change disease which manifests nephrotic syndrome then uh, membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis and so on and the secondary diseases which can lead to the glomerular injury are systemic diseases like sle diabetes amyloidosis so these are the important causes which can cause the glomerular involvement then the hereditary diseases like alport syndrome febrile disease they they can also cause the glomerular injury uh, then uh, and these are the manifestation of glomerular diseases which i already told you nephrotic syndrome rpgn in which there is rapid decline in the gfr then nephrotic syndrome chronic kidney disease and sometimes isolated hematuria or subnephrotic proteinuria so now these are my references so most of my content is from the romans and the next lecture i'll be taking the structure of glomerulus and the pathology of glomerular injury thank you very much